Next on Worcester News tonight, Southbridge holds a community meeting to address concerns following the arrest of a teacher. Plus, police investigate a home invasion. Victims say seven armed men broke in, used pepper spray, and stole their money. Good evening, thanks for joining us. I'm Tim McCone. We begin tonight in Southbridge where the school district held the planned community meeting. It follows the arrest of a teacher last week. 23-year-old Joseph Zuniga was arrested last week. He's charged with disseminating obscene material to a student. Zuniga allegedly sent a 17-year-old male student graphic pictures of himself through Facebook. Tonight's meeting took place at the school administration building. The media was not let inside. We did speak to one parent outside, however, who said there didn't appear to be many parents in attendance and that she's hoping for a reassuring uh, explanation. A plan to make sense and to make sure that our kids are safe. Like, this is ridiculous. There shouldn't be a reason why we should have a meeting like this if we're sending our kids to school to be safe. That's all we want is for our kids to be safe. And that's all I ask for. And I just want answers. I want it to stop and I want us to go forward and be strong. Zuniga has been ordered by a judge to stay away from the victim and the high school. Worcester police are investigating a bank robbery and tonight are looking for the possible getaway car. Police say a man entered the Commerce Bank on Park Ave around 3 o'clock Tuesday. Witnesses say he demanded cash from a teller but did not show a weapon. Police say the suspect got away with an undisclosed amount of money. He's described as a male in his 30s or 40s. Police say he was seen getting into a small Chevy or a Pontiac type vehicle. There's a possibility of a reward for information leading to an identification and arrest. It's sponsored by the Massachusetts Bankers Association. Worcester police are trying to track down several suspects involved in an armed home invasion. Police say they believe the home was targeted and the suspects used pepper spray on their victims. Olivia Lemon has the details. Keep the doors and windows locked at nighttime because we never know what's going to happen in our neighborhood. Norman Lambert is warning his neighbors to be safe after police say a home on Circuit Avenue East in Worcester was invaded Monday night. Police say seven men forced their way into the home looking for money. I came out the door and I seen three officers, one with a Tech 9, one with a shotgun, and one with a dog. They were just like pacing and saying, just going up and down the street with the dogs and that, so I don't know who they're looking for. Neighbors say police were on the street for a few hours telling people to get back in their homes. I'm kind of scared because I have kids. Police say a 34 year old man heard his wife at the front door and when he turned to look at her, seven men were behind her. Police say at this point, the 34 year old, his wife and another man were pepper sprayed and forced to the ground. The victims told officers all seven men had weapons. At this point, uh, they were maced. Uh, we believe because so they couldn't uh, identify the suspects that were there. Police say the woman was put into a bedroom with her seven and 15 year old daughters while the other two male victims were tied up. Trying to work on the identity of suspects, trying to figure out with, uh, why they chose this home and why did they believe that there was that kind of money at the house worth taking that risk. Police patrol in the area, so you must feel safe when you got police around. You just can't break into people's houses when you feel like it. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. October is National Disability Employment Awareness Month, and today the City of Worcester's Office of Human Rights and Disabilities put on their second event of the month. A panel discussion was held at City Hall and was open to the public to discuss a variety of issues when it comes to disability employment. The event was also put on by Workforce and Central Career Center and involved a question and answer portion for the experts. One out of five people have a disability, so we're all going to be touched by that at some point in our lives if we haven't already been. So embracing and understanding that it's not about the person's disability, it's what they can do that's most important. Earlier this month, city officials took part in a walking tour to experience walking blind in city streets. New advice from the American Cancer Society on when women should start having annual mammograms, and it's causing some reaction tonight. It says otherwise healthy women should start annual screenings at age 45 instead of age 40. It also advises switching to screenings every other year at age 55. The new guidelines were developed after two years of research. Doctors acknowledge it is a judgment call for women. All over the world, concerns when it comes to the recommendations. Different women are going to have different priorities. Some are going to care more about preventing breast cancer. Sort of no matter what, others have more anxiety about potential false positive tests, about callbacks. 
The overall message from the American Cancer Society is mammograms are most effective and save lives. A grand jury has indicted three people on murder charges for the death of a Worcester man whose body was found buried under cement in Rhode Island. Prosecutors say Stephen Pechoris, Michelle Morin, and Corey Bickhart conspired to kill Domingo Ortiz. Investigators found Ortiz's body under a cement slab beneath a deck at a Burrowville, Rhode Island home on May 29th. He had been missing since May 5th. A fourth person, Denise Walker of Pennsylvania, was also indicted on a charge of failure to report a death. A woman from Barrie is arrested. Police say this is her ninth OUI arrest. Deborah Adams initially called police on Sunday morning, asking them to remove a man from her apartment. When officers arrived, they found the man standing in the driveway and Adams was driving away in her car. The man told police Adams had been drinking and police followed her to a honey farms where a breathalyzer determined Adams' blood alcohol level was a point was a point two four. Adams will be arraigned this Thursday in Worcester District Court. A crash along the Mass Pike in Westboro slowed traffic down this morning, which involved several vehicles in the westbound lanes. It happened around 10 o'clock near exit 11. Crews shut down the right and center lanes while they cleaned up. Police say no one was injured. Sturbridge police are reminding everyone to keep their seatbelts on after a car accident today. Police say a 22-year-old Sturbridge resident was driving this car before he crashed into a pole. The driver told police he was distracted while adjusting his uh, seat while, while he hit the pole. He was wearing his seatbelt and police say he walked away without a scratch. More changes are coming to downtown Worcester as two of the city's best known office towers now have a new owner. Our Andy Madison has the story. They are two of the biggest buildings downtown. I remember years ago, I used to bank in there and there was a bank. Then it was up to five, but it was like Worcester. 10, 15 years ago, it was more thriving, a lot of people. And now the buildings have a new owner. Earlier this month, Franklin Realty Advisors bought the property from Berkeley Investments for more than $32 million. The latest move for an area that has seen a lot of changes in the last several years. I would like to see this downtown be a, a, a lively location, a, a real city center. That vision may be part of the reason for the developer's purchase. They're very committed to adding to density in the downtown and building a, a dynamic retail component, which is a big part of what we want to have happen if we're going to have the 18-hour-a-day downtown that Worcester uh, deserves. Not many details beyond the price tag are known. Franklin Realty Advisors is a real estate development and advisory firm in Massachusetts. Murray says the purchase goes along with the City Square project, which is aimed at improving downtown particularly on Front Street. People who come downtown, whether it be the DCU Center, whether it be the Hanover Theater, whether it's students, uh, it also provides a retail component for them to service and, and use as well. So this is an important piece of the puzzle. I hope that something good will come of it. I hope that it will, these properties will be developed as uh, real destinations. So what are the future plans for the two buildings and what impact, if any, will it have on downtown Worcester? The city said that will be announced next week. Andy Madison, Worcester News Tonight. The Diocese of Worcester awards grants today as part of a campaign for human development. Bishop Robert Manis is distributing more than $13,000 to 32 different organizations. The money will go to local efforts to fight poverty in Worcester County. One quarter of the annual collection will be taken in November in Catholic parishes and used for local efforts. The remainder is forwarded to the National Office for larger scale efforts around the country. The church, in our ministries, we can't address everything. So in a sense, we collaborate or we partner with these agencies to address the issue of poverty in Worcester County. And therefore, we feel obliged to use some of the monies raised by the National Collection to uh, help service these local agencies. The annual Catholic Campaign for Human Development has been working to fight poverty for four years.